Hello, everybody. Thank you for taking the time again out of your busy schedule to spend some time with Excalibur Data Systems, Comaround, and Solertis. Today we're here, we're going to talk about a beginner's guide to KCS. It's an acronym you're seeing all over the internet. And, and if you play in this uh, world of service management, customer service, help desk, uh, you've probably seen the acronym KCS. We're going to give you an introduction to what KCS is all about and talk a bit about why it's important to any AI chatbot-based chat initiatives you might be thinking about in 2018 and beyond. With us today, we have a rock star. Uh, we have Lena Stormveen from Comround. Uh, she is the head of training and consulting at Comround and is also a KCS trainer and consultant and also has a book out there on Amazon that you can download by uh, regarding self-service and knowledge management. Um, per Christian, who was originally going to be on this webinar, had a family emergency, but uh, we are blessed to have Lena with us, who has been a pioneer in the world of knowledge-centered service over the last few years. With that, I'm gonna not bore you too much with introductions, give Lena a presenter, and we, we try to make these fast and furious and get right to the action. Lena, I'm gonna make you presenter, and you should be able to take over. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for having me here. Um, it's my KCS is my passion and something I really love sharing and talking about. So I'm really happy to fill in for Pet Christian. Going out to meet new customers or new organizations, uh, I usually go in and I assess and look at the, the, the value that they have in the organization and, and what they are measuring as well. And I always come up with the numbers that we are measuring um, customer satisfaction. And looking at that and taking a step back, you can feel that customer satisfaction is not good enough to measure over time um, because a satisfied customer will go somewhere else if the offer is good enough, but a loyal customer will stay with us, brag about our, com about our product and will always be a part of it. So that's exactly what we need to do as well. We need to shift the focus. Usually customer support is looked upon as a cost center and I wanna shift it into it's a customer excellency center. This is where we have all the knowledge and information and in the organization. This is the hub where it all starts and we should be really proud of that and we should be able to measure that and share that with the rest of the organization and tell them what to improve on because we know both what's going on, the faults that we have, and also um, the interaction with the customers. And that's what KCS is all about. It's all about that interaction, mapping that down into the one experience and being able to act upon that experience. So this is what we're gonna be talking about for the next half an hour or so. An introduction to what KCS is and stand for. Uh, the future of support or the customer experience model, what I see coming from or working with many organizations from uh, early adapters that has been working with KCS for many years into new organization that are just started on the journey as well. And where you see the whole picture of giving support uh, to get that out. And in the end, I'll give you some good tips on where to start and where to go from here after the webinar in order to start your own KCS journey in your organization. Or you may just wanna boost the project that you already have going. What I see um, working with KCS is that we have top four benefits of it. The first thing you're gonna see is an increased productivity within every person in the support desk. This is because we're going to have a knowledge base where everybody can find what they're looking for. So you'll be much more quicker to get out the right information out to your customer. The second thing I see is a self-service success. And by that, I mean a self-service is actually working where the customer can find what they're looking for. Um, and also where the employee can update information on demand. We got something that we call a 90-0 rule. So 90% of what you know and that you should be out for self-service should instantly be out for self-service. 
And this is something much more mature organization aim for. But even for you guys, starting with your KCS initiative now, you should be able to sit focused and have a really good established cell service nine to 12 months from now on. The third thing we're gonna see as well is organizational learning. Because now we start learning from the experience that we have and we can really lift the team. Uh, what I see as well, for example, uh, Ericsson, which I've been working with KCS for many years, had their new hire time reduced from six and a half weeks down to three and a half weeks. So it really gives us that added layer on both an entry strategy, but also an exit strategy for, um, for people or employees leaving the organization because we're mapping down and we're having that knowledge in-house, which is really important. And the fourth thing is organizational improvements. So not only are we gonna have a good cell service, a knowledge base that we're mapping everything down in, but we're also gonna be able to give the correct feedback down to development or product management, and then make them sure that they will focus on the right improvements in order to thrive even better. So let me go through this a little bit more with pictures in order to make you understand uh, the full concept of how it works. And by that, we need to start off with a definition. Uh, so we need some sort of exception, whether it's an installation, a configurity, a how-to, a defect, an incident, anything that makes your customer day not run by as smoothly for do that. An exception number two that we need to make is that we do have a knowledge base, one place to put in that knowledge in. So looking at traditionally how we are giving support, we have our customers that are calling in, emailing in, or giving us some sort of direct contact in that sense. And how we have been working on this, traditionally said, is by a funnel. Well, the first line is uh, picking up about 80% of what's happening in the service desk and then 20% sent down. Uh, second line solve about 80, 20 goes down and whatever bit goes to the bottom. So whatever we can't solve in the funnel, we'll go down to uh, development or product management or any other in charge. And this is a very classic model that we have seen for um, or like most organizations uh, implemented and work with for the last 35 years or so. And it's worked really well because we have the low key resources on top and then it's more expensive the further down it goes. So let me take here uh, an example for this customer as well. Say that we have about 10,000 cases that comes in and working by the 20, uh, 80, 20 rules, it goes down we'll see that it's those 80 really hard that our developments are focusing on to develop. The problem that I see with this model is that development, they only get to see those 80 really, really hard incidents or problems. They don't see any everything that's going on in the funnel, all those 9,920 others. And we can't expect development either to figuring out or go through all those cases every month to see if there's anything else that we need help with in the funnel. And this is the background for why the Consortium for Service Innovation um, came up with the concept KCS in the first hand. Uh, they had gr group members come together with like big members organizations figuring out how can we together, figuring out a common strategy for how to work with support and how can we map that down and give that feedback out to, uh, to other organizations so they can thrive and be as good as we are uh, of working with knowledge management. And the idea we came up with was that we're gonna implement a knowledge base, one knowledge base for all, interesting. And then we can interact with this knowledge base uh, in order to find what we're looking for quicker and give that out to our customers. So they all did that. They all went out shopping for the best tools that are out there, uh, put all the information into the knowledge base, had an owner for the knowledge base, uh, and worked after this new model, and then came back to consort your meetings about six months later with the findings, and they all reported the same. It doesn't work. 
people are complaining that they can't find anything it's unstructured the person in charge has left the organization and got a new job nobody else want to be in charge of this it's an extra layer of work and today even 20 years later we still see the same problems many organizations believe that knowledge management is a new tool knowledge management the kcs uh, have the tool as an enabler to help us do the right behavior but the tool itself is not uh, kcs and knowledge management so we went back to the, to the writing table to figuring out like we like the concept of having a good tool that's put everything in one place and we came up with this strategy so everything that's happening in first line all of the agents in first line are responsible for that in the knowledge base and same with second line they're all responsible for that and third line and now now we got improvements because what's going to happen now is that every time somebody a customer is calling into the service desk the first thing we're going to do is look for the knowledge uh, if you find it we'll just link it to our case put it out to the customer case closed uh, if you find it we see that we need to update it we are updating it then and there and putting it out and the third one is if you can't find a solution it's my job to write that new knowledge article and it's very easily structured as well so we use a cases template with um, with the issued environment and the resolution and a good title up on that. So very easy, structurable. Every article is uh, the answer to one question. And now it's getting really exciting. But what you see now is that we're starting to see trends in the knowledge base as well. So I'm able to give feedback down to development saying, hey guys, do you know that this month, instead of that having those 10,000 problems to look at, I can actually tell you that there are three main areas that will go for a lot of the problems that come in cinema this month. So if you can solve those three, uh, we're gonna get a bit a lot. Development usually says that, oh gosh, uh, the first one is just a bug. Why haven't you told us before about this one? It's very easy to fix. The second one may take a little bit longer time. And the third one might require a system update or getting a new system or something more dramatic or serious it changes. But now I have the opportunity to look at the numbers behind it saying like, okay, but it will cost us this amount of money to solve it every month with a quick fix in the service desk versus how much will it cost to update the system in that sense. So it gives us a really better picture of what's going on. What we're gonna see now as well is that we have Lena. a lot of great information in the knowledge base. Lena. We should look at it. Yes. Is your screen supposed to be changing? Uh, I still see assisted, 10,000, 2,000. Is that the slide you should be on or are you moving? I'm on assisted with the knowledge okay. base. Perfect. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't, Do you see self? Like, there you, you go. See self -service? <laughs> okay. So Thank we're going to open that up for self service, uh, making sure that we're reaching much more uh, channel in this sense. Uh, for every good assisted model, 10 times as much will be made will be uh, made available in self-service. And the reason for this shift is that um, we are guiding our customer to the self-service solution and they solve the problem there. They're more than much willing to, to look around and help themselves with, with anything else, little problems that they have there as well. But this is where it goes even more interesting and um, where my more mature uh, organization are having a lot of fun because since we're seeing this shift that people are solving the problems in the self-service function it's more new problems are coming through the assisted model so it's much more complex we haven't solved them before and then much often goes down to second and third line in this sense as well so this is a good time to introduce something that I call intelligence swarming. And it's one of the initiative from the CSI. Intelligence swarming is basically a one touch model where we're saying that we're gonna try to figure out the right person in the organization that can help our customer with this problem. And if that person is not able to solve it, it will look in the person profile to figuring out which other person in this organization are most likely able to help me right now and is available and 
the customer loves it, the employees loves it as well. And what we see for resolution times with organizations that have in, uh, implemented intelligence warming is a um, 67% decrease in resolution time. So the result has been amazing. The next step that we have is community and self-service. Because what do we do if we don't know what to do or we have a question? Well, we'll go and we'll Google it. Because we're more likely to, uh, to look at other people and see what other people have been commenting or helping ourselves instead of trusting our, the organization for providing the right answer. And it's also much quicker as well to, to give support in this sense. So we really need to have the strategy around community and social media as well. Because what is it? It's really just a big knowledge base. And if you're looking at the contributor in social media, you have those same people that we are trusting more, that we're lifting up, quite similar to the intelligence forming model. And working like this as well, we are able to, to map whatever is going on into community, put that back into the self-service solution, and same, helping the community or social media to thrive with the help of what's happening in self-service. And we're also able to bring that communication back down to development. So we're getting a much shorter time between our customers and down to development. So what we see here as well is a reduced demand for direct support. And by direct support, I mean the thing that are coming in through the assisted model, because we will have that shift into self-service. But we also see some improved user experience because we're able to almost be proactive in the way that we're working with our customers and giving them uh, the right type of support in the time of need. And we have improved products and services because of the direct feedback that we'll get from our customers. Just imagine, you can actually get uh, free advice from your customers if you do this right. Just quickly looking at the numbers as well for my case. So we had said that I had this case was 10,000 uh, case a month for the support through the assisted models. It's 10 times as much happening in self-service and it's 30 up to 100 times that happening up in their social media. So the total demand for support is not just those 10,000 incidents or cases that we have, it's 410,000. Meaning that if I don't have a strategy around self-service and community and social media, I will just reach a small amount of what's really going on when we look at all the channels that the customer wants support. So this is what we need to start. We need to start with a good established method around how we are giving support and how we are working on everyday basis and making sure that all our agents are doing the right behavior every time in order to succeed, in order to get that whole flow going on. So summing it up, what KCS is and how that works is that the fact that we are creating and improving content is only a byproduct of answering questions and doing the right behavior in the service desk. So this is not an additional layer of how we work for the agents. This is just doing the right thing. Everything we do is based on demand. So we're never going to go in and create a lot of expensive articles that nobody is looking at. We'll do them on demand and we'll start easy and improve as we go. And we have this collective experience or all the everything that's happening in our organization will be mapped into one place. It doesn't matter if you're in the US or in Japan, you can all rely on finding the knowledge that's current to us at the moment in time. And this is how we recognize the learning, collaboration, sharing and improving as we go. So we're always looking back and figuring out how can we be better and how can we move forward in this sense. And this is super exciting. Um, I work with many different organizations doing this, uh, having big strategies around how to work. Um, a large organization based in the US that work with software, for example, introduced intelligence warming after about two years. And now they're having an agent in New York reaching out to another agent over in uh, Singapore and Shanghai 
And by the next morning, this agent comes back to work, the more complex new problem is solved and they're able to give that uh, dialogue out to the customer much, much quicker. So it's really, really exciting how it all works. And it all starts with that we are doing the right behavior. So when we're having uh, the first time a customer calls in with the problem, uh, this is where you do first a uh, work in progress article. So where you are mapping down uh, the issue in the environment, you don't know the resolution yet, you'll get some help to, uh, to get the resolution out. And really quickly, you have an article that is good enough to be published out. And this is where so many organizations go scared. Gosh, are we going to let everybody just publish out knowledge straight away? No, we're not. We are letting our agent prove themselves over time with the help of a licensing model to see that when they have proven themselves over time, that they are good enough to publish out articles to the self-service portal, then we will give them the right for that. We will have that trust in our agents. Because that's, they are answering that question on the phone every day to our customers. So why should we not give that trust in them as well to be able to publish it out for self-service? And once it's out in the self-service um, solution as well, it's not like it's just going to float around there because if it's in demand and if it's something that's um, not accurate in it or if it's some spelling mistake then any other small error, the next person that gets the same issue will search up, find the article, improve the article, and then publish it again and get it out, a new, better version. And on the other hand, if you only had that problem once uh, and you publish it out uh, and nobody else have that problem, we're not going to focusing on improving that article because there's no need. There's no one asking for it. But by doing the right behavior every time and getting that published out much quicker, as you can see here on my knowledge creation goals slide, the average time it today takes from when the first problem calls in until you have the most people with the same problem is about 30 days on average. So I want you all to go home and figuring out how long does it take you guys today to the first problem comes in until you have something published out for self service. Is it 30 days? Is it 60, 90? Do you only do that when we're implementing a new system? Well, if you can find that time for that, of figuring out how long that takes, now we're going to start doing a goal. Okay, it's 60 days. Can I get it down to 20? Can I get it down to five? So don't expect to go all the way in the beginning, but how can we reduce the amount of time it takes to come down to the 90 zero rule where 90% of what we know uh, should be out for self-service instantly. That's the ultimate goal. Learn from the best. We have been there. We have gone through it all. We have seen what is working and what is not working. There is a lot of great materials out on both the consortium's website and KCS Academy as well, where I got trained. Uh, and also take the help of consultants, take the help of getting workshop and get into the deep because we do have that experience. So we want you to try. We really want you to work forward as well. And um, as an extra gold mine into this as well is that when you have that knowledge base of structure on demand content, it's very easy to put a layer of an artificial intelligence on that or install a bot because that needs to read from, uh, from the articles and the knowledge that we have. So if it's that structured and you have a connection between your article and your case system as well, which is good and accurate, uh, the refinings that we've seen from consortium members has been really good. PTC built a bot, uh, which they call Dylan after the developer's cat, which I find is pretty cute. But this bot, um, show them within the first couple of months a deflection rate online for 34 percent so it's really amazing what you can do if you have the structure content and the way of working with knowledge combined with uh, modern technology i think we're just in the beginning here of something really good so how to get there as well executive commitment 
I can't stress this highly enough, but we need the leadership to buy in on it. We need them to understand how important this is. We need them to talk about it and show that we are committing that we want this. Um, you will be given the resources that you need in order to get this done. And you will continue to talk with them as well and tell them how well we're doing over time for that. The next team is coaching. Because we are trying to get all the agents in the knowledge base to do the right behavior and every time, so it's a new way of working with the problem solving uh, experience. We need help, we need other coaches that we find fit to help them to see where do we have coaching opportunities to make sure that are better and where can we uh, make, see that when they're good enough to do this themselves. It's really important measuring the right things the next thing on my list and by measuring the right things i mean that we have to use triangulation we have to look at the trends in what's going on in the service desk so the phone calls the case closed everything that's easy to measure uh, look at the trends because we want them to increase over time because we're increasing productivities but we're not going to put a goal on that so if it's easy to measure uh, it's also easy to manipulate, and that's something we're not going to put a goal on for the service desk agents. Then we need to measure as well the outcome, and this is usually something that's hard to measure, hard to manipulate, and also often measured after the fact. Uh, so this is harder to grab on, but it's also really good. You want to see trends in customer satisfaction leading to customer loyalty over time. Uh, you want to see trends in... Um, the employees that are enjoying themselves over time as well and increasing. You want something easier, link accuracy. So how often or what's the percentage of that we have put the right article next to the right uh, case? Link accuracy is a great measuring point. So talking about self-service success, another one as well. You can't fake that. This is something that you have to do the right behavior in order to get them to work. And the last thing you need to measure as well is article quality index, um, which is uh, measuring how good the content in the knowledge base is, um, and the PII, process integration indicator. So of all the opportunities we had to do the right behavior, how often did we? Deployment attitude, as I talked about before as well, Make sure that you don't that the organization don't think that knowledge management is a tool. It's not a tool. It's organizational change. And change takes time and it's hard and you have to be resistant. But when it works, it's just amazing what you can do with that. And the last one is like figuring out where are your customers today and align that to demand. If they are in the communities and in social media, well, that's where you guys need to be as well and have a strategy around that. Uh, if they are calling in, okay, we'll make sure we'll keep helping them and do the soft skills and make sure that do it better, but we'll, we'll get that out uh, much quicker to them and we're gonna change them and learn them to figuring out what's going on in self-service as well. So where shall we begin from all of this? Where's a good start? Uh, we have something called a KCS assessment report. Uh, it doesn't take that long to do, but it's a really good status quo. Either you're new to KCS or you want to reboot your program as well, or do like a monthly, a uh, yearly assessment to see uh, where can I improve on. We're looking at the knowledge that you already have, the processes that they do there. Do you have any bottlenecks? How can we get them up? The technology that's in place. For self service as well, do you have a solution or not? Is it working? Can people find what they're looking for? And what's the culture like? Are we a competitive culture or do we release time uh, for collaboration in that sense? So I, I can really recommend that as a first input in order to get leadership buy in. Business case is the next step. So you got your leadership buy in, you know you want to do that. Well, get some help from a KCS uh, program manager. Uh, someone who's trained hopefully, from the consortium, from the Service Innovation KCS Academy. They have really good trainers there as well. And get their help to build that business case to see where can we try, what's the KPIs that we will get from this, or what's the VOI, value of investment, where we're going from there. 
We do have also a half day workshop or management workshop. So in order to help getting that executive buy-in, it could be a really good place to go or just get the bus started and think differently as well. And this is what was the eye opener for me when I first got into understanding more about the, the KCS world. This three days KCS practices workshop, of course, um, with a certified trainer. Uh, it really gives you the keys that you get to understand where do I start? What's next? How does implementation look like? What can I expect from the search and search in time? When's that going to happen? What kind of people do I need to bring on board with me in order to have that shift happen in your organization? So I'm going to end this uh, with a quote and then I have some times for questions as well. But I think this reflects really well on what we are trying to do by Oren Harari. The electric light did not come from the continuous improvement of candles. So dare to be bold and take that lift and go for it. And you're going to see it's going to be a lot of fun. And with that, I was wondering if it's anyone that have any questions. Uh, we can have time for a couple of them now. So you can chat them in if you like. Uh, or you can, yeah, also I think we'll keep put them here to chat them in. So one of the questions uh, that I can see is um, where to start um, when you are implementing KCS. Uh, I think it's a good thing to, um, to begin with uh, a business case and from there, a pilot project or a pilot group because if you are a large organization with uh, many agents so if you have 50 or more agents I really recommend you to start with a small group uh, I prefer having between 10 to 20 people in the group as well it's easier for the conversation going and get that feedback right uh, and test the systems, see what works. Do we need to, to fix everything? Do we need to look at the content standard that we have? Does it not work today? Is the workflow too, um, too many bottlenecks in that as well? And when you have tested that and proven that, that makes that so much easier to just roll it out to, to larger scale of agents or even other parts of the organization. So just see someone asked about as well, is it applicable for, for other areas? Absolutely. Uh, I had a, a customer of mine, a Norwegian oil company, that had implemented KCS in the service desk a few years back, and they did really well. So HR came to me and asked if uh, we can add that layer of KCS into HR globally. And absolutely, uh, we'll see the trends. And that's also why the name has changed from uh, Knowledge Centered Support into Knowledge Centered Service is that we see that, that it happens at other part of uh, the organization as well. So it's really exciting and um, it makes sense, like everywhere where you can add that layer of KCS on or agile knowledge management, as I like to call it, is uh, definitely something you should think about and, uh, and have that um, into the structure. All right. Nina, there are a couple so, more questions coming in here. I don't know if you can see them there. Okay, so uh, no, can you tell me? Sure. So Tim asks, doesn't the intelligent storm reduce the skill set of agents if certain calls always go to the same person? So intelligent swarming? Yeah, the intelligent uh, I think they, yeah. They swarm. I think they meant to say swarm. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> sure, that's a really good question. Um, of course, I can see where you're going from. So you think that if you have one person that's really good, you will always get the hard questions. Well, first of all, um, if I'm a new agent, uh, like a previous first line, and I don't know too much but uh, about anything, I can opt in uh, on swarming opportunities. So if I'm really interested in, in one domain of product group, I'll opt in and I'll make sure I just listen in or be a part of that conversation um, in the beginning. Uh, then I will be starting to be assigned cases as well. So it goes, it depends on how high the volume are for um, for cases, incoming cases. So you have either a list to choose from or if so, nobody's picking it uh, after a minute or so, it gets assigned to you. So yes, we will have, want to have 
more people uh, being the one that are the first touch and those who are really good at it can rather have the job the role of uh, a swarm master to help monitoring the conversation so more into like yeah a leadership and role. I have another role question that. here from Bill. Bill asks, is the KCS assessment report that you talked about something that can be done via self-service? Is there a template that can be used to complete the assessment or is that something that they would go to uh, come around mm -hmm. Excalibur or Solertis to have done? That's another good question. I will definitely recommend that you go to some of the partners here uh, to have that done of course there's a lot of materials on the consortium website but in order to get the assessment as up to date as it can be it usually takes only about 20 hours or so so it doesn't take that long but we're matching you up to mature kcs members where they are and where we see that you should go in so i definitely recommend that you you go through one of us for the reporting I see another question here from uh, Zach. I think Zach, uh, we'll follow up with that uh, on the side. I don't think that's uh, a question for everybody here, but Zach, I will get back to you. Zach Saul uh, asked a question here. I think a little too much, uh, too much information for everybody. So with that, I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of your busy schedules. If you have any other final questions, we'll hang out here for another minute or so. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. Let us know if there's any way we can help support you on your journey to KCS. <clears throat> Excalibur Data is this Comeron partner in the US. Solertis is the Comeron partner in Europe. And uh, Lena has been great to put a couple other great websites you might want to check out if you want to learn more about KCS. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.